so uh, very good evening uh, and thank you to all the lovely ladies who made it out to this session today it feels great to know how many women take their sexual health and well being very seriously we all know what cervical cancer is but uh, did you know that it is the leading cause of cancer related deaths in india uh, Uh, wondering how to stay on the other side the answer is simple prevention with vaccines and reg regular hpv testing we are sure all of you have plenty of doubts and concerns surrounding this topic so to put all your questions to the rest we have someone very special joining us today please allow me to welcome dr shilpi reddy a qualified uh, obstetrician and gynecologist with 18 plus years of experience in treating infertility and high risk pregnancy cases she is famous among her patients for making them get back to their normal lives and work routines in less than a week after birth with rich medical expertise more than 80% of her patients have undergone normal delivery during high risk pregnancies needless to say we have someone very uh, uh, much reliable with all our queries we can please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box section we'll try to address them throughout the sessions in case you miss your chance we'll also have a 10 minute q and a session round where we can have one on one with dr shilpi to understand the queries better so now we'll begin with this session by learning about all about cervical cancer how is it caused how it can be prevented with all sexually active women who needs to undergo the regular hpv testing to reduce the risk of being affected with this condition so without further ado let's get started with this session all over to you dr shilpi thank you hello all this is dr shilpi reddy and today we're going to talk about cervical cancer and its preventive strategies uh i'm so sorry there was a delay there was an emergency section that was going on i had to finish and come and now when we go when we want to talk about cervical cancer we should have an idea of what cervical cancer is now when we have to talk about cervix cervix is the entrance of the uterus when the uterus is it's a globular pouch like thing and the entrance of the uterus is called the cervix cervix is the one that is actually exposed into the vagina and any infections uh, anything that comes through the vagina through sexual uh, contamination and all that hits the cervix first so cervix uh, again it gets exposed to the environment quite very often and uh, cervical cancer is one of the leading causes of death in women of reproductive age group uh, and also postmenopausal women why is cervix so important the whole point in time that we want to talk about cervix is there is a preventive uh, you know mechanism where cervical cancers can be prevented and we can actually you know uh, reroute this phenomena and uh, cervical cancers are one of the leading cancers in women that i have already told uh, after the breast cancers and uh, uh the whole point in time is cervical cancer the reason behind cervical cancer is human papilloma virus called as h h p v virus now what is h p v virus it is one of a kind of a virus uh which has access to the reproductive tract and also not only the reproductive tract it can uh, these uh, human papilloma viruses there are about hundreds of strains of human papilloma virus about 100 of them are very very important and these viruses have the capacity to get into the cervical cells and change the dna of the cervix and slowly make it into precancerous and then cancerous lesions now this change that the uh, hpv virus can uh, get into the cervical cells these kind of changes even hpv virus can cause warts the vaginal warts or the penile warts it can cause also lot of cancers other than the cervical cancer that like the vulvar cancer the like the vaginal cancer 
like the penile cancer and oropharyngeal cancers also now there are several um, you know different different strains of uh, human papilloma virus that can cause these kind of cancers even the anal cancers and the anal tags all these things are together a big you know a, a different spectrum what the hpv virus can cause and now uh, it can be as small as the warts and as big as cancers and when we talk about cervical cancer yes hpv virus can cause cervical cancer it can cause anal cancer it can cause penile cancer uh, it can cause throat cancer vulvar and vaginal cancers and usually you know the contamination is by the sexual route uh the sexual route is the main uh, contamination source and also we have another uh, route of uh, infection that is the skin to skin contact sometimes skin to skin contact also can cause uh, this uh, infection to happen and uh, uh, why are we so much talking about this uh, hpv infection and cervical cancer and the other cancers are they are actually preventable any woman of reproductive age group uh, if they do regular pap smear examinations they can actually find out changes inside the cervical cells well in advance and you can prevent uh, you know cancer formation in a similar way hpv virus has also been uh, you know used in a vaccine form to prevent cervical cancers now these cervical cancers can be prevented if a young woman you know who is not sexually active or who is not having hpv virus infection is given this vaccine then cervical cancers can be prevented in a similar way even in boys young boys if they are vaccinated against the hpv virus infection even in them anal cancers oropharyngeal cancers vaginal i mean uh, you know penile warts all these can be prevented then everybody asks one single doubt that when is the vaccine best to be given if given a chance i would definitely say that a vaccine should be given to children between 9 and 12 and 15 years of age that is because at that point in time exposure to Uh, the uh, sexual activity or the skin to skin contact or these kind of um, hpv viruses is not there and when they get vaccinated at this young age whether it is girls or boys definitely their uh, preventive strategy is very very strong in a similar fashion if somebody misses at that age usually the vaccination age for women is between 9 years and uh, as a child in 9 years to up to 45 years and for for my practice what i usually do is if anybody who's not vaccinated uh, we do their hpv testing it is a similar test like a pap smear we also do the pap smear for a routine test and hpv testing also if the hpv test comes negative then again we give them this strategy of vaccination which is a gardasil vaccine or a cervix vaccine there are two brands that are available Gardasil covers against uh, six. Uh, usually, the strains are six, eleven, sixteen, and eighteen. These are the major strains that actually, uh, you know, are involved in cervical cancer and also, you know, vaginal uh, warts kind of a thing also. And Cervix uh, usually gives uh, protection against. the 16 and 18 which is cervical cancer uh, you know hpv virus of cervical cancer now uh, not only the gardasil 4 vaccine and uh, you know the cervix vaccine that are available there is another uh, very important vaccine that has come into uh, you know uh, the market these days which is called as gardasil 9 vaccine now the advantages of gardasil 9 vaccine is it has got nine strains which can cause uh, you know these this hpv infection and various various uh, other cancers like oropharyngeal cancers anal cancers and all these things and the protection for this gardasil vaccine gardasil 9 vaccine it gives protection against hpv virus 6 11 16 18 31 35 45 strain 
52 and 58. So these are the strains additionally covered other than the four strains of Gardasil 4. Now this vaccine is a little expensive, but then yes, the advantages are more. And usually we are promoting this vaccine for young boys and girls between the age of 9 to 15 years, where they have not been exposed to any of these HPV viruses. And then for them, the immunity is quite, uh, you know, predictable and they can be uh, a lot more advantages. And now when it comes to young age group of children, they need only two doses of vaccine. The first dose today and after another six months, the second dose. But for adults, uh, the vaccination is three doses for Gardasil vaccine. That is uh, the first dose today and after two months and then after six months, uh, there are three doses. Similarly, Cervix also has three doses, 0, 1 and 6. So uh, there is a slight difference between the two doses, uh, two dosage regimes. But then now that Gardasil 9 vaccine has come, it has an added advantage to itself and it is uh, uh, another level of protection that we can give them. And, uh, you know, uh, pediatric immunization has to be promoted in this front. Though the Gardasil 9 vaccine is little expensive, it's around 9 to 10,000 rupees. But the advantages that it gives is pretty much higher. And the normal vaccine, the Gardasil 4 vaccine or the Cervix is around 2 to 3,000 rupees. And uh, uh, it is very important that you should not be pregnant or planning pregnancy in that six months period that you're taking vaccine. So taking this as an advantage, if somebody has skipped in uh, the vaccination, we advise them to take the vaccine uh, before they get married or, you know, before they're planning their children or at least once they have delivered a child immediately postnatal, postpartum, there is a protocol that we give everybody this vaccine so that the next six months, anyways, there are very low chances of getting pregnant with another child. And it also uh, benefits, uh, you know, continuation of the vaccination program. And, uh, you know, HPV virus infection uh, does not uh, cause uh, an immediate cancer. You know, it has got a very long period of, uh, you know, infection and slowly transforms the cellular structure into uh, infection, then pre-cancer and then cancer. Maybe it, it takes up to around six to 10 years also. So if somebody who has not been vaccinated also, they can choose for vaccine or somebody who's not, uh, you know, had vaccine can do regular pap smear examinations and check for dysplastic changes and then go ahead with the uh, screening of HPV virus and vaccination. And uh, uh, cervical cancer is quite notorious and it's quite de debilitating. And, you know, if, if usually we, we find them in advanced stages because uh, maybe they just present with some kind of an intermittent bleeding or sometimes they have uh, intermenstrual bleeding or bleeding after intercourse and sometimes they just have some watery discharge or some foul smelling discharge and when we examine them then we come to know that there is a cervical growth and the growth has extended and uh, women usually tend to present late because they think that it, it can be infection or it can be a general symptom and they just keep avoiding uh, you know, getting to a doctor. So cervical cancer is definitely, definitely preventable. HPV infection can also be prevented by vaccination and strong recommendation for vaccination is there to prevent HPV viral infections. Wherever possible, I think we should definitely promote Gardasil 9 vaccine. And just in case if Gardasil 9 vaccine is not available, for the quadrivalent vaccine, the Gardasil 4 is also very good. And usually we are promoting Gardasil 9 vaccine in young uh, children. And uh, if Gardasil is not available, then Cervix is also as well, uh, you know, very good for cervical cancer. And then uh, for additional vaginal warts and these protections, the Gardasil 4 acts very well. And the other cancers of the penis and vulva and vagina and anal and throat cancers, Gardasil 9 acts very well. And, uh, uh, you know, HPV viruses are everywhere. You know, they're everywhere. And uh, uh, we cannot protect ourselves from HPV virus infection. Uh, but yes, uh, if your sexual activity is 
pretty much in a closed circuit and uh, you don't have multiple sexual partners and uh, whenever you are having a sexual activity you are using a barrier or a condom and definitely along with the other sexually transmitted diseases it can also give protection against uh, hpv virus also so that is also very important for the vulnerable group to take care of themselves in a proper fashion in a proper mechanism so that sexually transmitted diseases are uh, you know not happening in the current scenario and current generation but wherever possible uh, it is important to vaccinate the the young uh, children and adolescent age group uh, be it boys or girls against the uh, vaccination uh, for the hpv virus so if there are any doubts then definitely we will take the doubts and then we can have an interactive session so i think there is a doubt endometriosis from past 7 years and i have multiple cysts in my left ovary yes so whenever there is endometriosis endometriosis is a condition where the lining of the uterus is present outside the uterus maybe in the ovary or the tube or somewhere in the abdomen and it keeps replicating the way it happens inside the uterus but inside the uterus there is a way out for the menstrual blood to come out but if it is in the ovary the blood gets collected inside the cyst itself and it keeps growing and it keeps spreading to the other uh, places also so it is very very important that we take care and uh, if you have endometriosis the best method is to clear the endometriosis if you have small small cyst there is nothing to worry you can change your lifestyle and then have proper diet proper sleep healthy you know environment around you and it will keep itself under control if you have multiple cysts bigger cysts pain and infertility and you planning pregnancy then definitely you have to completely clear this off and make sure it does not recur again and again with medications and then plan pregnancy as soon as possible yes with vaginal swab definitely uh, there are two things first is the pap smear you can do your pap smear on a regular basis yearly pap smears to know whether the cervical cells are good uh, and it's a cancer screening for uh, cervical cancer and also if you do a uh, you know vaginal swab you can know whether you have fungal infections or bacterial infections if you don't have infection the swab will come normal but if you have infection the vaginal swab culture will give you what kind of an infection you have and actually what medications are going to work for it and that will definitely definitely help in the management and that is how actually you will have the correct management happening because if you just take randomly some medication and uh, it did not work and uh, uh, sometimes it is bacterial infections and we keep popping uh, you know vaginal uh, you know antifungal medications but sometimes there is actually uh, fungal uh, infection and we keep taking antibacterial tablets and all that so the correct investigation is important and we need to be very vigilant and the correct protocol has to be followed so any other doubts we can you can ask thank you dr shilpi uh, so to all the audiences out here uh, as we had a good session on this we would like to understand if you have some more questions which can be raised and can be understood uh, under the presence of dr shilpi please uh, we can, we are ready to have those questions out here Uh, yes doctor it seems like we have two questions on board uh after postpartum do we need to check vaginal swab see postpartum is a period when you will have lot of secretions happening from the uterus also 
because of the delivery and the lining and membranes and all that we usually don't suggest any postpartum vaginal swabs unless and until you have foul secretions or foul uh, you know a lot of a lot of a lot of abnormal secretions we don't do any swabs and what do we do for ascus you know ascus is something uh, that is you know they are atypical cells you know the cells which are not normal looking when we do a pap smear for ascus again it is definitely based on the age group of the women for somebody who's young and they've seen ascus then you can do your hpv virus testing if it is positive keep doing your pap smears on a regular basis if it is negative you can take the vaccination and if it is somebody who's finished their family and somebody who's around 50 years then they can have two options one they can go for surgery uh, removal of the uterus or they can keep doing very regular um, you know pap smear examinations and they can also get tested for hpv virus but if hpv virus is positive then the option for hysterectomy would be a much better thing because the cancer tendency will be higher uh, with hpv virus positive and especially in the 50 plus age group for somebody who's 70 plus and they've got these kind of reports then abnormalities have to be noted and then you should advise them for surgery but the only thing is if you know young people having ascus positive then they need not worry because uh, you know cervical cancer has a very lengthy uh, you know uh, transformation period so when you do your regular pap smears it will definitely pick up if it is going forward but if it is hpv positive you need to be very vigilant and if it is hpv negative then definitely a young woman can definitely go in for vaccination spotting before and after period is common but yes you should check for any uh, cervical polyps or any infections that uh, have to be just noted and sometimes with thyroid problems also you can have these things prolactin issues also you can have these things ma'am in pregnancy skin tags skin tights at the anal area is common or cancerous no they're not cancerous in pregnancy the anal tags are because of the piles that happens that they're not dangerous So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Shilpi, for educating all us, uh, all of us out here on HPV and how it leads to cervical cancer if left undetected. It was highly insightful from your end uh, for this session and hope it was evenly insightful for all our participants out here. Uh, I thank all the participants for joining again with this insightful session and taking a charge, good charge of their uh, sexual health. We would be sharing the recording link for this webinar with all the attendees. Last but not the least, we would soon be launching our at-home self-collection HPV test kits, ensuring ease of testing, discreet packaging, and expert-reviewed results backed with complete confidentiality. Till then, we suggest you all to stay tuned, and I'll drop a link to get more understanding on the same. Yeah, uh, there are two questions. After delivery, spotting is common. Yes, it is common. And after cervical cancer treatment, is there any chances of recurrence? Yes, uh, cervical cancer, again, there are several stages of cervical cancer. The early stages of cervical cancer, there is definitely a cure because not only surgery, we also have, uh, you know, chemotherapy, pre and post chemotherapy and radiotherapy that is available. Curable rates are very much high in early stages if detected early but advanced stages the recurrence is definitely there and uh, there are several times that we've seen inoperable cervical cancers so you should be very watchful pap smear is annual and there is no uh, relaxation in that but then if you get two or three normal pap smears then at least once in two to three years you have to get it done
so i think uh, the questions are done so thank you all for the opportunity given uh, home collection of hpv testing is very very easy it is just not cumbersome at all and given a chance everybody should screen themselves for hpv virus and if your hpv virus negative definitely go for the vaccination and if it is positive just be vigilant and there is no reason to panic when you have no uh, you know abnormal secretions when you are not having any abnormal order or any kind of an itching then the vagina is healthy and you should not worry about it Thank you and take care. Thank you, Doctor, for your webinar and for your time. Thank you to all participants for attending this webinar. Why opt for HPV DNA testing? Hi there. Ever think about your sexual health and well being? It's time for you to give your sexual health top priority. Human papillomavirus, or an HPV infection, is one of the most common sexually transmitted infection. It is spread through vaginal, anal, or oral sex. Did you know? About 80% of the sexually active people get an HPV infection at some point in their lives without them even being aware. This is because most of the time, an HPV infection can be asymptomatic and can go undetected. If undetected and undiagnosed, it may lead to cervical cancer. HPV infection is responsible for nearly all cases of cervical cancer in women. Cervical cancer can be cured if detected early and treated immediately. This is why WHO recommends that all sexually active women take a HPV DNA test every once in five years. Why choose LifeCell's HPV DNA test? With LifeCell's HPV DNA at home self collection kit, you can now easily monitor your sexual health. It is a convenient, confidential, and hassle free test that screens for 24 high risk HPV genotypes that may cause cervical cancer. This test uses PCR, polymerase chain reaction technology, for accurate results. Don't wait any longer. Reduce your risk of cervical cancer. Get screened right away.